Okay, live is working now. Now you can let people in now. So you 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 can make me again host and oh, okay. I, I'll take, yeah. take care. Oh yeah, you are first now. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, Rohit. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Kofing. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah. All okay. Maybe I can just share my camera with your aunt. And. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, Rohit, uh, at, you, as you know, we had some issue at morning, right? So, the yeah, issue yeah. is somehow related to NTU as well. So they they have not probably renewed the this Zoom thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, I got an email. Yeah, I got an email. Yeah. So uh, it might be or might not be. It might be that after forty minutes we need to reconnect okay, everyone. Okay. okay. <laughs> but let's see. Hope it work well. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you got, you got email? Uh, yeah, I got email from somewhere from uh, and you got uh, NI basically this uh, this uh, Zoom issue email. Oh, yeah. University yeah, of Yeah, some, uh, yeah, yes. Uh, um, NTU NI account reduced to basic version. I got exactly. email from NI. Yeah, yeah. And NTU even haven't sent the email yet. <laughs> yeah, so they are, they are clearly mentioned that you can, you can use in the 14 minutes, after 14 minutes only. Okay. Uh, did we get Varun? No, sir, we haven't received. Oh. Maybe I can forward this mail. No, no, we, that we get to know that this has been done, but there's no email actually. Means I, I complained in IT section morning, so then they said, oh, oh, even they also know. Yeah, no I forwarded email. just now, yeah. So, so we got in 11.30 around that email, so I came to know that this is the problem. <laughs> yeah. so probably in, and you also knew it after our complaint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I can share my slide if it's, it's okay. Uh, I can just check everything is working well. Yeah, yeah, you can. I think I'll make you co-host then now. At least that function is working now. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so I can share, right? Yep. So I'll go to share. Okay. Hmm. Is it visible? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, it's visible. And uh, okay, it's changing also. Changing, right? Yeah, I think. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Can I leave it like this or I just have to unshare first? I think it's it, you can keep it like keep this. Keep it like this, no problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Let me speak. What time you raised the complaint? It's around 
11 i think in between the symposium i actually asked to my wife richa there was going okay. on here <laughs> okay. and then she complained yeah okay. it's around 11 okay so they have sent the email after 11 11:30 oh yeah so that may but why only in nai then <laughs> or you also received i don't think i have received Yeah, hello, Warren. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How are you, Tianli? Yes, uh, okay. <laughs> So I saw my talk is uh, like uh, three three, three PM. PM right yeah yeah so how how long the presentation how long have the presentation it's twenty minute time for you so you can finish in fifteen sixteen minute and so that three four five minute on questions oh okay yeah. how long you have prepared oh, uh slides is about uh eighteen pages. Okay. I mean, before you attend the session, you should know how long is your talk, right? Yeah, I I know my my talk is about twenty minutes, so I said as like a uh, uh, including the question part. Yeah, think it's around. We can start. Yeah. Okay. So welcome everyone. So this is our last session 
for the Magnetic Symposium 2021. And uh, this session will be chaired by Dr. Shankar from Imri. He's a senior scientist there. So Dr. Shankar, please take the mic and uh, start the symposium. Right. Uh, thank you, uh, Varun. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just, just one, one announcement I want yes. to make to everyone. So in case the meeting is stopped in between, because we are having some issue with in NTU Zoom. So everyone is requested, please rejoin again immediately. Oh, okay. It, however, it's low chance, but it can happen. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so um, uh, welcome everyone. So this is the last session uh, of uh, the Magnetic Symposium uh, 2021. Um, so uh, each uh, talk uh, will be allocated uh, 15 minutes uh, with uh, uh, three minutes of uh, uh, question and answer, right? So altogether, it shouldn't be more than 20 minutes each. So we hope to be able to finish it uh, on time. Okay, so the next talk uh, is given by Dr. Rohit Medwal. Uh, his title is Controlling and Probing Spin Current. Um, so, with uh, without further ado, uh, please, uh, Dr. Medwa. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Shenke, for uh, introducing me and then change the session. And then thank you, organizers, Varun and Professor Prem, for organizing this wonderful event uh, under the umbrella of IEEE Magnetic Society. And with this, I would li like to start my topic that we are going to talk about controlling and probing of spin current. I am working in Nanyang Technical University, Singapore. I'm Rohit Medwal. Basically, without going into the detail of the applications of the spintronics, as everybody know today, because this is the second day of the workshop or the symposium, where people are talking about the spin transport technology, they are using the spin orbit torque to switch the magnetizations. They are trying to see that how we can generate this spin current. And in the same direction, we are also working on the spin hall effect and inverse spin hall effect, where we can convert the charge current to the spin current and spin current into charge current. We can also do the spin pumping to exert a torque on the magnetization of a ferromagnetic material or convert back the spin current into the charge current. And this can use for the propagation of the domain wall motions in the magnetic materials and then spin wave logic devices. We are also working on the spin transfer technology using the photonics. We call it spin photonics, where we are using this uh, ultra for short pulses to generate the terahertz photons using the spintronic emitters. We do work on the femtomagnetism, where we talk about the ultra fast time scale, which is a femtosecond time scale, and which is used for the ultra sensitive sensors and ultra fast spin transfer devices, which is a future of the spin transfer technology. And we also do work on understanding these two phenomena using the in-situ and operant electron microscopy using the Lorentz and differential phase contrast imaging. And we are basically mainly focusing here on the MAMS based chip, where we can use this MAMS based chip in the TEM and try to see that all the effects of the spin transfer technology in the TEM when we see the using the electron beam. With this, I will mainly focus on the three, three, main, uh, three main aspect of the work, where I'll be talking about the domain wall motion in the YGPT using the spin orbit talk. I'll be talking about the anisotropic magnon pumping using the spin charge conversion phenomena, and then switching on the terahertz spin current using the photothermal effect. And with this, I would like to start what is the basic mechanism of spin to charge conversion. As we know that we can use this thing, we can use the several schemes where we can use electricity, to, charge, to change the charge current to the spin current, light, sound, vibration, and heat. And we can also convert this in generated charge spin current back to the charge current using the same effect. And here we'll ma mainly focusing on the spin hall effect, where we are using the electricity to convert the charge current to the spin, as we, it's demonstrated by this animation. And we can use this, uh, we can use the inverse spin hall effect where we can convert this spin current back into the charge current. And as we know that there are the basically fundamental phenomena where the we can do uh, techniques, basically spin transfer technology, uh, spin transfer torque, and uh, ferromagnetic resonance, where we can use the RF RF excitation to basically convert this charge current to the spin current and spin pumping inverse spin hall effect, where we can use the pumped spin, uh, the inverse spin hall effect in the platinum, where the pump spin get converted into the charge current, and can these type of devices can be fabricated. 
I will not go into the detail with one by one because uh, the yesterday uh, Mr. Manna has already explained that how we can convert the charge current to a spin current. He has uh, shown that the, when we apply the magnetic field on the magnetization can start precising because of the oyster field and the spin orbit torque together. We can see here and at the same time, they, he clearly showed that, that there are the basically more main two applications where the, we can use this effect for the um, MRAM, basically where we can switch the meditation from the one state to the another state and auto oscillations where the meditation is start precision and can be used for the neuromorphic computing as well as the uh, reservoir computing or the wireless communications applications. But what if when the meditation of the ferromagnet is precision and is, is start injecting the current into the platinum? So I will be talking about here, the same phenomena. When we apply the HRF, uh, the H effective, we can exert a torque, the same phenomena, and can start meditation to precise, but meditation will try to align into the direction of applied magnetic field. And we exert, we apply the HRF to excite this meditation to start precising and make the sustained oscillation. And this spin, this sustained oscillations will start pumping the spin into the adjacent platinum layer, which can give rise to the inverse spin Hall effect in the platinum. And then this, uh, the precision of the meditation is completely uh, discussed using the LLG equation here. And if you see the signal of the spin hall effect, which we measured, as you can see, see clearly here, there's a, we can measure the voltage across this uh, terminals. And we can see that the spin hall effect is first increasing uh, as a function of the as a function of the magnetic frequency and then start decreasing. And when we see the spin hall effect uh, signal, it mainly contributes two major contributions. One is the spin hall angle of the material of the platinum, which we are using and the spin current, which is a JS. So to quantify what is the main contribution of these two parameters, uh, I'll be discussing here in the next slide, where I will define our JS is basically may contribute two main important factor. One is the spin mixing conductance, which is the interface quality of the interface the property of the ferromagnetic material interfacing to the uh, heavy metal. Because once you uh, fix the interface, your mixing conductance is almost fixed. However, the prism cone angle is the angle which decides the spin current where when the, if you increase the prism cone angle, you can have the higher spin current. What are the possible way of the increasing the prism cone angle is basically the HRF, which we are using to excite the ferromagnetic layer. And you can see that the prism cone angle is proportional to the HRF. Higher the prism, higher the HRF, higher the prism cone angle, higher the spin current. So there is a actual very important need to quantify this prism cone angle to investigate the spin to charge current into the platinum. To do that, what we did, we basically try to investigate the prism cone angle by several te techniques like using the AMR, using the power absorption, we use the power meter, and we also use the power, uh, VNA, and we can also use the input power as a, uh, which we have given to the CPW. And what we clearly observe that we calculate the prism cone angle using this to uh, this, basically uh, four different technique. And we observe that, that there's a four different behavior is coming out as a function of frequency. But when we calc when we feed this value in the prism cone angle in the spin current, and we calculate the spin current, what we interestingly observe clearly that the power absorption gives the linear increase and the AMR effect, which is giving the first increase and then decrease. I would like to bring attention here that when we measure the inverse spin hall effect voltage in the platinum, because of the spin pumping, first our voltage was increasing and then decreasing. These two measurements was to, measurement is completely taken at a different devices and different scale, and which is very interesting. So we clearly use this AMR effect and we calculate the spin current. And when we uh, use this spin current to cal calculate the spin hall angle of the platinum and what we observe that the quantification of spin angle is a frequency invariant in the platinum, which is expected and which should be true. But ideally, the people generally show that the frequency, the spin hall angle in the platinum is a little bit there, the, the deviation in the spin hall angle in the uh, platinum as a function of frequency, because of the, there is another superior signal which comes into the picture when we are measuring the spin hall angle of the platinum. So with this, we also thought that how we can use this. Now we are using the spin orbit talk of the platinum to convert the charge current or spin current into the charge current. But what if we have a ferromagnet which has anisotropy or a spin orbit coupling? Does it this spin anisotropy effect on the spin pumping in the system, which is pumped into the platinum? So to do that, what we did, we designed a new material where the YIG trim and with a different facet anisotropy. And we clearly confirmed this using the IFMR, we have a four-fold anisotropy in the YG1001, 
and the uracil anisotropy, including with a small amount of the cubic anisotropy in the 0, 1, 1, and there is almost no anisotropy cubic anisotropy in the triple one. We designed this three YIG as a function of the, like, the different facets and control the anisotropy, and we made the devices from the extreme two devices, uh, two films, where there is a cubic anisotropy and there is no cubic anisotropy in the YIG system. And we measure the inverse spin Hall effect voltage signal, and we can, what we observe clearly that uh, we can see the, the polarity of the spin hall voltage is reversed as a function of magnetic field, then the signal is observed as a purely a inverse spin hall effect voltage signal. And what if we did the angular dependent measurement of this, and what we observe that the YJ triple one is completely giving sine theta, and which is expected for the, basically for the summit geometry where we are working on, we are using the auto plane, excit auto -plane excitation for the, this uh, devices. So for the auto plane excitation, the spin hall symmetry is follows the uh, symmetric component of the spin hall angle is follows the sine theta. However, for the YIG 100, we observe a modulation on the over the sine theta with the cubic cube, cubic as as So we were trying to understand. Basically, we understood that very clearly that and modulation is because of the anisotropy, which is coming from the YIG 100, which is not available in the YIG one. Uh, YG triple one. To understand that, what we were trying to do, we were trying to understand that from where it is coming. Is this coming from the mixing conductance? Is the mixing conductance changing as a function of the cubic crystal, or the piston cone angle is changing as a function of the cubic crystal? So we did calculate the mixing conductance, and it we calculated it using the two different schemes. One is normally with the line width, and we fit the line width to calculate the damping vector and we use the damping vector from the both the cases, we are almost getting the close, almost same spin mixing conductance, which is almost a constant value. But however, when we did the power absorption measurement using the VNA, and this is the YG100 on the top one, and this is the YG triple one, and we clearly observed that there's an anisotropy in the power absorption when we are doing the uh, power absorption using the VNA in the YG100. And when we deconvolute it, we can clearly see that that because of the piston cone angle is changing as a function of the anisotropy, as a result of this, as a result of this, we have the modulation of the anisotropic spin current over the sine theta. And we have tried, we, are, we were able to try to add a one new term that the, we cannot ignore the anisotropy of the ferromagnetic material, which we are generally ignoring when we are making the devices or spin, uh, spin to charge conversion. And that modulation is basically dominating by the anisotropy of the YIG which has to be counted in the uh, review uh, literature. So with this, we are also trying to do that how this spin current can affect on the domains of the YIG, which is also a crucial. For that, we are working basically on the four aspects of that microscopy. We are currently working on the microscopy where we can apply the current, voltage, temperature, and magnetic field in the TEM. And then we use this special holder where we have instituted an open electron microscopy holder where we can ins insert a mams based chip and we can design, we can use the FIB to fabricate the sample and can, uh, can uh, make the electrical contact over it and can uh, apply the external stimulus like the voltage and using the voltage, we can filter on the, induce the strain and all these uh, different aspects can be uh, studies for the uh, spin transport technology using the operandal electro microscopy. So these are the different uh, things which we are trying to do using this name, uh, TEM, but I'll be focusing on the one aspect that is the uh, domain wall. So for that, basically we use a Lorentz microscopy where we can see that when we have a Lorentz microscopy, we turn off the objective lens, we use the micro Lorentz lens to image so that we don't disturb our magnetic domain using the external magnetic field given by the objective lens. So we did that. We can also use a differential phase contrast imaging, but we did for the different project, but I'm not showing here. But I would like to highlight that if you are, the sample size is very small, and then the probe size, uh, the, we can use the STM mode where we can focus the beam on the sample and we can really map this, we can scan this beam over the sample with a different magnetic domain. And because based on that orientation of magnetization, we can have the deflection on the bright field disk of the TM which is coming here. And we can see that the, the, the deflection in the bright field disk can be directly mapped to the magnetic moment of the magnetic material, which is available in the system. So these two basically as a, uh, techniques are available, but I, we focus on the Lorentz microscopy. And what we did, we have YG what we have YG sample, and on the YG we deposit the platinum, we apply the charge current, which because of the spin hall effect, this charge current convert into the spin current and can give rise to the you know, the spin orbit torque on the YG domain. And the, this is our device geometry, and then the the holder where we have. Use the YG 
YAG in the uh, TM. And this is our device. You can see that this is the, our device YAG uh, interfacing with the platinum. And what we observe clearly that when we have YAG, uh, we see the domain first. Basically, we can focus and defocus and we can see the magnetic domain. This white is a magnetic domain. And this magnetic domain, we first check whether we can move this domain with the magnetic field. When we increase the strength of magnetic field, we can move this white domain to this and we can clearly observe this movement of the white dom uh, domain. Uh, one more the... minute. One more minute. Okay. And uh, with this, basically, we also clearly observe that. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, with this, clearly observe. Uh, we, we clearly observe that uh, we can move the domain as a function of the electric current. And uh, you can see here. Uh, sorry. Uh, you can you can see here that the our domain is moving as a function of the electric current. And clearly, we can propagate them as a function of the electric current in the TEM. And we can map the position of the domains like the 3 milliampere milli and up to the 5 milliampere. And we were able to successfully demonstrate that we can use this magnetic domain for the microscopy, uh, in the microscopy, using the open door electron microscopy. And with this, I, I think I will skip this part where uh, I, will, I was talking about the terahertz emission because there's no time. And with this, I would like to thank for the uh, with this talk, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Medwal. Uh, this is a very, very interesting topic. And uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time. Um, so we have time to uh, field um, maybe a couple of questions before we move on to the uh, next speaker. Um, yeah, sure, so, sure, sure. So do we have any questions um, for Dr. Medwal? Uh, please unmute yourself if you have any questions or raise your hand. Um, okay, so I think um, there, there aren't any questions uh, from the audience. Um, so let me ask a very simple question, Dr. Medwal. So um, what uh, potential applications uh, uh, can, can we uh, think of uh, by converting the spin current back to the charge current? Spin current to the? Charge current. Yeah. So what, what applications uh, 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 can we uh, use it for? Yeah, uh, okay. So basically the part which I skip here, very clearly you can see that when you shine a femtosecond laser over the ferromagnet, you can set up the spin current into the plant uh, in the in the system, and this setup spin current can give rise to the quenching of magnetization and give rise to the enhancement of the uh, magnetic moment in the heavy metal, which can give rise to the setup spin current. And because of this transient charge current, the super super diffusive spin basically super diffusive spin current, you can convert this. Super diffusive spin current into the charge current because of inverse spin Hall effect and can give rise to the terahertz radiations. So you can you can generate the terahertz photon, uh, which is uh, which is uh, well, like and you can generate basically broadband terahertz sources using this uh, spin to charge conversion. I see. Okay. Um. So I think uh, uh, one of the uh, student presentation yesterday. Uh, yes. Was, uh, yes. Yes. Referring to and this. Yes, and this presentation was here. This one. Yes. Oh, okay. Enough. Okay. Avinish, uh, Avinash. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Melval. Um, so if there are no more questions, we'll move on to the next speaker. Um, the uh, next talk is given by Dr. Jin Tian Li. Um, uh, yes. And um, the title of a talk is Spin Reflection induce field-free magnetization switching in perpendicular magnetized MGO-PTCO heterostructures. Um, the floor is yours, Dr. Jin. Yeah, let me try to share my screen. Can I see my screen? Yes, I can see oh, your yes. screen. Yes, thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much, very much for the chairman for your for this introduction. Okay, good uh, afternoon, everyone. My name uh, my name is uh, uh, Tiandi. I'm from NTU. Okay, uh, I'm very happy to share our recent work with all of you. Also, uh, uh, also I'm um, um, appreciative to your comments. So today my presentation uh, title is uh, Spin Reflection Endurance Fuel Free Magnet Switching in Particular Magnetized MGO PD Cobalt Header Structure. So here I uh, I highlight my talk, the main or the keyword spin reflection, uh, fuel free magnet switching. Okay, firstly, uh, I will give a uh, brief introduction about non-volunteer and right. So uh, as we all know, the spin transfer torque uh, MRAM has many advantages compared to SRAM and, and DRAM. So the gigabit capacity uh, and STT MRAM has been commercialized. Uh, however, in, S in STT MRAM, so they have some drawbacks. It's like the, the, writing, uh, the writing current is directly uh, goes through the MTG cells. So it's uh, which which will cause the uh, area was more damage to the MTG cells. So it's also uh, limited the the device cycling endurance. So uh, because uh, also because the uh, cause the uh, the spin polarized current is uh, is uh, the current uh, polarized by the fixed uh, by the fixed layer. So uh, during the low uh, Conversion of the charge current to speed current, so the writing uh, the writing current is not so very high. So as the improved type of MRAM, uh, the straight terminal as as a spin orbit torque MRAM was proposed. It separated the reading and the writing post. So you can see the uh, the reading is your, the goes through the M, uh, MTG cells and the writing they the send the in plane current. So in, in this uh, schematic, so the current current is uh, can be reduced because high uh, high charge to speed conventional ratio and in the high, high heavy metal layer, also the switching is, uh, is faster. The uh, the cycling endurance uh, has been improved. So uh, now we're moving to the uh, speed orbit torque induced magnetic switching. So uh, oh, here uh, here we use the the bilayer structure to uh, to explain this. And have, uh, we have the heavy heavy metal layer and the ferromagnetic layer. So when we when the charge current flows into the heavy metal, so because the stronger stronger spin orbit coupling in the heavy metal, so the speed up spin down, the electron uh, electron will be separated in opposite direction. So the speed accumulate uh, accumulate uh, accumulated on the heavy metal surface. So which which will generate the spin current. So this spin current is the polar, polarization sigma. So uh, the when this uh, spin polar spin polar uh, spin polarized current uh, goes through the high, uh, ferromagnetic layer, so we are, it's it's we are, uh, exit the torque to the ferromagnetic layer you know, to reverse the magnetic to reverse the magnetization. So it's like uh, there are two torques uh, we uh, we uh, have considered. One is uh, dumping like torque. Uh, it's like uh, the uh, the, polar, the spin polarization uh, absorbed by the magnetic M. So it's the uh, uh, M product to M. Uh, so this this follow. So this follow this formula. So the next one is the field like torque. So it's uh, uh, M product to sigma. Uh, here, here is the example uh, in M. Uh, in the SOT uh, uh, MTG cell, so in the current below the TA, uh, TA high metal layer, so it can uh, generate spin current to switch in the cobalt and boron uh, free layer. So the, the right, right one is the, uh, uh, is the switching curve. So uh, we are here, we are now the spin polarization of the spin, uh, the polarization of the spin current is along the in plane. It's normally it's the uh, the y direction. We uh, only the the dumping like torque can only driving the magnetization to the in plane state. 
when the when the current is when the current is switched off, so the magnification uh, can go up and down, so the chance is uh, equally. Also, uh, for for the memory application for the in the pub, for the memory application, also uh, we we want that it means the switching. So here, uh, so uh, normally the in plane view is required to break the symmetry, symmetry. Okay, there are many uh, uh many research works about uh to about how to achieve uh, achieve the feel free switching. So when or uh, when uh, when it's use the in plane field uh in plane in plane field uh, embedded so they use the anti magnetic layer to introduce to in, uh, introduce the exchange bias field to tilting the tilting the ferromagnetic layer the in the magnetic direction so they can uh, achieve the dynamic switching. The other way is they created the anti tree gradient use the wedge structure. So they 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 broken the lateral symmetric, symmetric the lateral structure symmetric. So it also can achieve the the dynamic division. Uh, so when the some group use the hybrid structure, uh, they combine the ferro electric and the ferro ferro electric um, structure. So they tuning the spin current distribution and also can also can combine the spin temporal torque and the spin orbit torque. Okay, recently the some work, some group uh, proposed use the low symmetric structure. It's like use the STO substrate uh, grow grow the uh, L1 or the copper copper platinum. So they, they have some low uh, symmetric uh, uh, axis. So they can has carries in its axis to achieve the field field free switching. Okay, uh, more recently people also pro propose use the uh, anti ferromagnetic like mag magnetic. So because this material, uh, the they have the non uh, collinear or uh, other uh, other mag magnetization, so they can uh, it can induce the uh, spin polarization not uh, not in in production. They can go to the uh, auto production. Uh, excuse me, everyone. Uh, there is a miss. It's showing there that the meeting will last in less than a minute. So I request all of you please rejoin immediately. Okay. So I will continue. Yeah, you continue. Okay. Uh, so uh, here we, we can conclude that uh, for the fuel free switching, uh, so all, all the method is we are, we are going to uh, break the symmetry, uh, neither in material and distribution or the spin current polarization or the spin current distribution. 